That's perfect. Heat Blast is one of those characters, one of those crossovers, one of those skins where you take a look at them and you're like, that's a, that's a, that, that, that's a hot boy right there. That's not Ada. That's a, you know, that's someone else. But again, it is Ada, if you're not aware. This crossover skin that I'm using, I'm Poo, if it's not obvious in these gameplay clips. Uh, as I'm tossing these weapons up into the sky to delay the weapon spawn for this incoming opponent in the ranked 1v1 game mode. Uh, again, like the Garnet video, this is about 40 minutes, 30 minutes of footage put together. Um, and it's about... Oh, wait, excuse me. Let, me. let me rephrase that. About an hour and a half of playing to about 16 minutes of footage, uh, given that, you know, ranked 1v1 queues. The higher elo you get, the longer you'll probably be waiting, and given that I'm US West server, which has less people uh, than some of the more populous ones, then uh, it, it, it'll be a little while. So that's why I don't see the most ranked on this channel, though I guess, you know, if I don't play ranked, then people tell me, you know, why aren't you playing ranked, and then when I play ranked, people say, uh, why are you playing ranked? So, you can't really win. No, it's actually interesting. I know this is not the topic of the video at all, but it's like... <laughs> It's interesting that I get comments when I have videos where I don't lose, and then people complain that I'm not losing, and then when I lose and I put it in a video, people are like, wow, you lost. That was not fun to watch. So, I guess that's more of not being able to win. But you know what you can win? You can win an Ada Ditto when you got the superior skin. And that's uh, that's what's going on right here. I was behind a whole stock, uh, getting a little, little bit to the topic at hand here crossover versus the original uh actually the difference in the signatures i don't think is a uh is a big deal like it is on some of the other crossover skins with heat blast but i do think the biggest offender comes in with these blaster skins you can i mean i made a whole video talking about cross where it's if you use gauntlets and you 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 use i cannot speak these blasters it can get a little bit confusing uh and they look super cool on other legends and all that definitely uh, my favorite blaster skin in the game but, uh, yeah, Ada is one of those characters where things can just snowball. As you saw in this game, like, I really didn't hit that other Ada that many times. But the combination of my high strength with her low defense just meant uh, it's kind of going to spell disaster. And that's kind of the typical type of thing that you see in Ada games, where either you kind of snowball someone or you get snowballed yourself, uh, given that stat spread of low defense but high attack. And not just high attack, but signatures that knockout extremely early like that spear ensig like the guns ensig you saw i got that in that first match there with the gc it can kill super super early get a nice gimp uh and a light orange ko or something like that and, and that's part of playing ada and playing against ada too is avoiding those huge huge opportunity signatures so if you're playing against an ada spear recovering to that stage you really don't want to enter an area where that ensig can hit uh, at the same time when you're playing ada Let's say you have an edge guard situation, they're recovering to the wall, and you know they only have one option. That NSIG is a great tool to use, because it just covers so much area when you GC it. Uh, you saw right there, it's a little bit of a stutter step into that side SIG. I do think Ada Spear side SIG actually, in many ways, outshines that huge one, like, that huge, uh, huge, s like, swinging blast, I guess I'll call it. Um, because... While that NSIG, again, is one of those that, if you land it, it's incredibly strong. That's an if you land it. Versus that side SIG, I think, is uh, very, very useful in almost every situation um, that it is useful in, if that makes sense. Given that uh, that NSIG does not hit grounded, but this side SIG does, and it also covers a huge area, uh, as you could see in that clip when I landed it on that second stop from the Diana, it's very, very useful. It has a lot of range, it's very quick, it has knockout power, again, with everything in Ada's kit, it has a lot of knockout power. Um, and that's the type of character that she is, really. It's like, you're gonna get these high octane plays, and you're also probably gonna get steamrolled a little bit, and it's about playing around that. And that's pretty much every low defense character in the game, but I think especially the glass cannons like Jala, like Ada, it's about being able to maintain a level head, knowing that some situation in the match, you might just dare lose your stock, and then if you get hit three more times, you're going to be in the orange. And being able to play around that. You know, I, I make a little bit of a comparison, which is interesting, to heavier characters in games like Smash, where I, I know it's interesting that, <laughs> or I guess ironic that I'm comparing the lightest character in Brawlhalla, or the lightest characters in Brawlhalla, to the heaviest in Smash. But the idea in Smash is that heavy characters are combo food. 
So you pretty much start out most stocks already behind, and it's about getting the hits, getting the KOs anyway in spite of that, given that you know it takes less effort on your part. Um, or less hits, I guess. And so with Ada, like, knowing that that combo is going to do more damage to me, it's going to make me a lot closer to being knocked out, just means that, you know, when I get that one well-placed ground pound to get the KO, you know, that's just part of the game, you know? And to a certain extent, that's true with every Legend, right? Like, you're never going to have a perfect game where nothing goes wrong. Like, something's going to go wrong. The game is way too fast uh, to, to even think about something like that. You know, people make comparisons with chess, with fighting games, because, you know, it has that element of, you know, call and response, where your opponent does this option, you pick a different option. It has this element of, you know, execution, where being able to pull off the right move and, and being able to unleash the correct strategy. The difference, though, and, and why I think a chess comparison actually isn't uh, the best, is that in chess, you have all the time in the world to think of a decision. And I don't just mean in the moment. Like, in, in chess, if you look at a board, the answer will be there. Like, you can look at it later and the answer is there. The thing with fighting games is, like, sometimes the answer isn't clear. Even if you go back in your replay, like, did you make the right option? It depends entirely on what your opponent does. And so the difference between, like, something, again, like chess, where, let's say you made the wrong move, well, you can go to chess.com, you can analyze the board and look at the most optimal thing that you could have done. But sometimes in Brawlhalla, in fighting games in general, you know, in video games in general, that's not always clear because of how fast things go. So a lot of playing is understanding the limitations of your abilities in the moment where you can't make the per perfect decision 100% of the time. And that's okay. It's about refining your decision making and being comfortable with taking risks. Because fighting games and neutral game, the way that you can analyze it, you know, what what is neutral game? It's when neither player is getting a hit. It's when neither player has an advantage. It's when we're ju both just jumping around, missing each other five times in a row right here. That's neutral game. It's sometimes you're taking a risk. And, and really, a lot of it is educated guessing. If you think about neutral game and, and movement, and it's about, you know, a propensity of what you think the opponent's going to do, what you're doing in response to it, or what you're doing in anticipation of it. And that is inherently a risk because it's not guaranteed. You don't know what it is. And so that, I guess, connects in some sense to playing Ada, to playing Heat Blast, which is a risk itself, you know? Playing a low defense character is not, does not give you as much security as someone like Baraza, where, you know, you have those powerful blasters, but then you also have, like, eight defense to work with. But that's also part of the fun, you know? Knowing that you could land that Spear Enzig or land that gun recovery and and make it back to stage in some super quick ways where a character like Barraza with four base speed wouldn't be able to do, it's part of the fun, you know? I, I, if you're game with that. And uh, there we go, double D-Light Sair. That uh, Bodvar did not escape that one, and, and that'll get the KO. So, that's part of playing Ada, you know? And that's part of playing fighting games. It's just, I guess, more obviously expressed in a character with low defense that the risks you're taking are more tangible in the sense that, yeah, you will die faster than every other character in the game. So, you know, what are you going to do to make up for that? I guess you're going to spear dare like eight or nine times, knowing that the opponent's going to spot dodge. Uh, this game was a... Uh, this was an interesting one, that's for sure. Hopping into this next one, though, you know, Val against Ada, there are two in some sense, polar opposite characters, right? Where you have an Ada, low defense, high strength, and then you have a Val, high defense, low strength, you know? I guess you can compare different things like close range gauntlets versus longer range spear, longer range guns. So uh, there, there's also things you can look at there. But really when you think about it, it's a lot about being comfortable, right? As a Val player, I think you're much more comfortable sometimes taking those risks in neutral, you know, maybe throwing out that gauntlet down sig in a situation to read a dodge because you know that maybe you won't get hit as much, and or maybe you can get hit more, you know. Whereas when you're playing a character like Ada, a lower defense character, especially against one that's higher strength, you know, if I was up against a Taros, I think I'd be a lot more scared. Um, it's about, like, payoff, right? The risks you're going to take are going to be rewarded more 
in some sense, right? But it also means that if they're not, you're gonna have, you're, or you're gonna have to face a lot bigger punishment, right? And that's kind of the the thing with playing lower defense characters, especially. I think uh, this is a lot of why people value defense so much, is because it makes. I missed my combo there. That's unfortunate. It makes the risk lower for something that could potentially be the same reward. And I guess this goes into my next point about payoff. And a character like Baraza, you know, going back to that example between the two of them, Baraza has super low dex. And that's the difference between him and Ada, where they both have high strength, but Ada has high speed, high dex, and Baraza has high defense instead. And really is the amount of... I, I, I guess this analysis, is the amount of dex that Ada gets worth it for the amount of defense that Barraza gets instead? And like this is the problem is that a lot of the time the answer is no for a lot of higher dex characters. And that stat that Ada has in dex, you know, maybe if she had one more base in defense instead, like would she be a substantially better character? And in the meta right now, I think I'd venture to say yes. And you can look at comparisons like someone like Barraza's blasters where yeah, you have less movement speed, but if you have that speed stance, you can lock into 5, and 5 is a comfortable value for most legends. And then those risks that I was talking about earlier, you know, someone like Val can take more of them. Someone like Baraza can too. Even more, actually, because he has an even higher defense stat. And so, does he get the same reward for taking those risks? I mean, kind of, yeah. They have similar strength values, they have similar KO potential, given that Baraza has that down sig and that, that end sig on blasters and if that's the the if, if that's just how it is like does that make Baraza just straight up a better character um I don't necessarily think it's as simple as that but it's something to think about right when you're comparing characters and who to main like do you very much value that potential for being able to take a risk or or do you want to just zoom across the map and play heat blast and, and, and jump with your guns end sig and in this you know, play session, absolutely, I, I would, I'd much rather play Ada in this play session than a slower legend like Barraza, and that's just how I felt in that moment, and that's okay, and the, one of the questions I get the absolute most out of any question, I mean, there's a few, like, one of them is, what keyboard do I have, uh, you know, the Crayola G60, but it, it, it's, is this main good, should I main this character? And so let's take a look at Ada as an example. Should I main Ada? If someone asked me, should I main Ada? Should I main Heat Blast? The answer I'd give is sure, like if you want to. Because every character in this game is good enough to the point where they won't restrict you until you get to like the top 20 people in the world. Because you can get rank one with any character. And even then it's, it's more about like being able to pick what's nece like what's stronger in the moment um, but that is, like, influenced a lot by meta and stuff like that. And again, because a lot of the base underlying things behind Legends are the same, like, yeah, maybe you're able to take more risks and, and get that Ensig, and, uh, and whatever. Or take less risks, I guess I should say, with Barraza versus Ada, but, like, they have the same fastball speed, like, they have the same dash, they have the same, like, jump height, like, those things are all the same. So, like, in that sense, it's easier to have a game that's balanced when there's a lot of overlap. Um, and less difference between e every single individual character. Um, but the idea is that, like, even if you end up in a year never playing Ada, like, is that time completely gone to waste? Like, was maining Ada, like, right now a bad decision? And I guess I can't answer that question for you, but I don't think that worrying about a legend's viability in the future should impair you or petrify you from playing them if you want to in the moment because even if ada gets completely nerfed and is completely unviable like well playing her for a while you're familiar with her you're probably better at fighting other adas you're also probably comfortable with guns you're also probably comfortable with spear and so like that time that you spent playing this legend that Again, you probably like in the moment because you're asking if you want to main them. Like, is that time worth spending maining them? Like, I think sure. If it's worth it to you right now, then I think it's worth it. And I think worrying so much about 
the future and whether or not she's a viable character and will like quote unquote pay off in the end um, isn't necessarily the focus given where you are right now, which is just where you are right now. You're not in that future patch where Ada hypothetically just becomes unviable overnight, which by the way, I don't think ever happens to Legends. I don't think a Legend ever becomes unviable overnight because again, every single Legend in the game you can get rank one with. Um, so, not, not that rank one is necessarily an indicator of skill. I mean, in some sense it is, but in other senses it's also an indicator of like when you're queuing and who you're queuing against. It's a whole thing, but y I think you get the idea, which is that, you know, every weapon in this game has won a tournament. So, maybe that's a better way of saying that. The point is, is that regardless of who you play, whether it's Garnet, whether it's Ada, whether it's Braza or Val or, or, or Bodvar, your decision in the moment doesn't have to be final. Just because you play Ada right now doesn't mean you'll even be a guns or spear player in that hypothetical where she gets nerfed or if you get bored of her, if you don't find success with her. I think, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're daring some more. So, uh, so go for it, you know? If you want to play Ada and you think that she's the character for you right now, you can play her. And maybe even pick up the heat blast skin on the side, I don't know, I mean, that's up to you. But... I guess I did it. I mean, technically I didn't. This is like for Hollow Partner, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. It's a little random commentary. Maybe I'll do one of these again. We'll see. Good night.